It's evening time in St. David's. This is the cathedral. 28 years ago, I came to St. David's for the first time and I stayed. You can see my house from here. And um, in May, I was supposed to be performing in the Cathedral Music Festival. Every year they have a music festival, which is just astonishing with international music and musicians from all across the world. And they come to the cathedral and perform. St. David's has the most amazing community of people. Um, it's small enough to be um, a city that is like a village, really. And as you can hear, it also has a lot of rooks who are singing to us this evening. So we were supposed to be performing down in the valley there. You can see the Bishop's Palace as well. And all festivals are cancelled. Musicians are struggling, having a really hard time. The cathedral is struggling because it relies on its visitors for financial support. And um, I should imagine the Christian community are suffering as well because they can't get to their places of worship. Um, it's a beautiful place. So we've made this film as an offering to, I don't know, St. David's, the Cathedral, the Festival. Hope you enjoy it. The Lost Words is, um, a book about words. It was um, inspired by a realization that common words for nature and common knowledge and naming of the natural world was falling out of favor. Um, I guess parents didn't know the names so they weren't passing them on to their children. And um, to try and redress this balance, Robert McFarlane and I wrote, uh, worked on a book of spells. Um, it's, it's a short dictionary that ranges from acorn to wren. It is a book of spells and it's about finding and seeking. It reduces the alphabet back to the symbols that it is, 26 letters of the alphabet. And the spell which is spoken is an acrostic and that speaks the creature back into the landscape. So it's it's a simple it's a simple book of magic and it's had a strange life, including bringing together a group of the most astonishing musicians to create spell songs. And that is where I met Beth, um, Beth Porter who was inspired by this book and spells that came later to write the Goldfinch song. The Goldfinch spell is not in the first book of The Lost Words, but when we all met up in the Lake District as spell songs, Lost Words spell songs for the first time back in September 2018, we were lucky enough to see some spells which I believe will make it into the second Lost Words book. And one of these spells was about the goldfinch. And as soon as I read this spell, I was immediately taken back to where we are right now, which is in Wigtown, um, close to Wigtown Bay, and a walk called the Martyr State Walk, which takes you right along the bay. And when I was pregnant with Molly, I did a lot of walking, um, particularly in May, as she was two weeks late. It's her birthday in a few days' time. And she... Molly. Yes. Yes? <laughs> there she is. There's some vegetable crisps in there somewhere. Um, so we w did this walk many times and what really surprised me about it, I suppose, was 
seeing how many birds were along this walk and how many goldfinches particularly that I saw together, this charm of goldfinches that I'd never really seen before. And so when I read the spell about the goldfinch, it took me back there. So the song, um, Charm on Goldfinch. <laughs> Two sex more. So the song, Charm on Goldfinch, is inspired a lot by this walk, um, but also has the words um, from the goldfinch spell. And obviously, Jackie Morris. A butterfly! Jackie Morris has many, painted many goldfinches. I see lots of Bluebell by Robert McFarlane 
blue flowers at the blue hour, late daylight in a bluebell wood, under branch, below leaf, billows blue, so deep, sea deep, each step is taken in an ocean. Blue flows at the blue hour, colour is current, undertow, enter the wood with care my love, lest you are pulled down by the hue, lost in the current, drowned in blue. The House Without Windows is a curious book. It's a book that found me um, in the way that books sometimes do, written by a 12-year-old child um, in 1927, first published in 1927. Um, it's a story about a child, but she's, she, in some ways she's not a child, she's a creature who cannot stand to be indoors. And so one morning she walks out with a small bag with some crackers in and she goes and lives wild in the hills um, first of all in the meadows then by the sea and then she moves to the mountains and it's a strange dream journey um, that moves between landscapes um, it kind of weaves in and out of time and um, I wrote an introduction to it because the life of the author mirrored the life of her character. Um, and I don't really want to say any more about the writing of it. Um, Beth and Ben were commissioned to uh, write a song for Wigtown Book Festival, and they wrote the most beautiful song about Ipasip, um Chasing the Wind. I, I'm not sure it's got a title yet, but uh, it's a haunting song and a haunting book.
see the tallest mountain tops and orchids made of clouds. My ferns are frozen. Thrill and flame of gold. I don't feel cold. You won't catch me anyway. I will scramble white peaks and find where skylarks greet the sun. The Unwinding is a book that began, I guess, in paintings. Um, in between illustrations, I often will just paint because you get quite tense trying to work to deadlines. The paintings are my unwindings. And um, I decided that I wanted to gather some together these um, these were images that only had story that was visual and I wanted to make a book that was a place for people to rest, a harbour where they would find catalysts for dreaming and I was supposed to be writing the um, introduction for The House Without Windows but this idea kind of took over and instead I wrote a synopsis for The Unwinding, which was called The Keeper of Lost Dreams, until a conversation with Alison, who is the designer, where I was explaining to her about how these were my unwindings, and she just went, that's a brilliant title for a book. Um, they're very short pieces, and I wrote some of them, or notes for some of them, in um, a, a notebook. Uh, working from the back of the book because this is, wasn't the book I was supposed to be working on and then I would write on my typewriter which uh, used to belong to my father. My father was a policeman and he wrote up his reports of crimes and now I write stories and poetry on the typewriter. And it became a book um, and then it became an idea to actually remove all the words so people could write their own and there were just the pictures there and if you didn't want to write you could draw on it so it now has the silent unwinding with it which is like um, I guess a book of hours where um, there are blank spaces for you to put your own creativity in and it's also now becoming an audio book and with the beautiful ideas of Ben and Beth to have a silent version so that you can read along to the music yourself if you want to. Um, and I think it's going to become more things yet. Sometimes the best books or best ideas that you have, they don't come out fully formed, they're like a seed and they grow. Um, and that is what the unwinding has been doing. It's been growing into other things. I hope it's going to grow into a big colouring in sheet and in the meantime my fingers ache to get back to the typewriter. Sprinkle with 
with pledges Mark to the edges And when it's finally broken Steady, that's when it's finally ready Prescription, a potion of color, bathed in lighter reflection. Will wonder not of itself, but to conjure another bind bound and numbered stitch. These all together, lesser prescription, a potion of color, bathed in lighter. Will wonder not of itself but to conjure this night we unwind as This is a view from my studio. You can see in the distance, two miles away, is St. David's Cathedral. And you can see Skoma, and you can see the sea. The sky is full of swallows. And there are martins. And in the trees, uh, there are usually goldfinches outside my studio. And it's very beautiful here. And this is where I made the Lost Words, The House Without Windows, and The Unwinding. Well, we're sorry we can't be there in person this year to play at St David's Cathedral, but uh, hopefully this has been a nice little snippet um, from a concert, and we're just really glad that we're able to um, record something and do something virtually with Jackie, um, and we very, very hope to be there in person next year. Um, where I hope we'll be doing the concert for real. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in and watching, and um, yeah, take care. Thank you.